Hello again. Welcome to the sec second session in this room for today's. Samuel Silva is a Portuguese WordPress freelancer engineer and his passion is learning, collaborating and supporting WordPress fellows like all of you. Today, Samuel will talk about block themes, the game changer that came to stay. A warm welcome to Samuel Silva. Thank you guys. What's happening? <laughs> Are you guys crazy? <laughs> um, thank you, Freitas. Who who has a bottle like this one? Jesus. You guys are outdated, right? Sorry. It's a private joke from back from 2022. Okay, let's go. Um, my mission today is to talk about Site Editor, the game changer that came to stay. And I will try to explain why I consider this a game changer. Okay, so um, let's go. First question to the audience, uh, who knows where is the site editor? Already use it. One, two, okay. Oh, nice. You don't need me anymore, perfect. Amazing. Okay, basically uh, for the ones who are not familiar with, um, site editor allows you to design the entire site, including the header, footer, and everything in between with blocks. That's the official uh, definition of the site editor. Basically, now with the blocks, we, for the first time, WordPress uh, is now editable, everything through blocks, header, footer, etc. So this is, you can understand why this is a game changer. Um, another quick demo here, we have um, editor changing between header, footer, saving the footer, uh, etc. So yeah, it's now like a page builder, but without a page builder, right? Just another demo. We have now um, style variations. This is this will be key for um, for the editors, right? Okay, I think we can with these three videos we can understand uh, how important this is for uh, WordPress CMS, right? Okay, let's start. Why this is a game changer? Um, I do have a story to tell, okay? Because, you know, this feature didn't appear just now. It's being developed and used uh, by us specially since the last six years. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Back in 2018, right? A while Gutenberg appeared. And it was polemic, I know. Uh, brought a strange way to build the web, right? I mean, for us developers, um, brought a strange way. And also brought freedom to the content editors. This was strange too, <laughs> for me. Like for the first time, what are you doing with, with my header? What are you doing? Um, and this as a result, of course, in a debate in the WordPress community about the future of WordPress, right? It was so polarized, that discussion. And nowadays, now in 2024, I still have that discussion with some of you. So in the open source universe, we never have a final product. So it's not like iPhone launchment where a private company prepares everything and then launch a product. No, good things take time. Uh, and we are um, now in 2024, we can understand Gutenberg that turned into blocks as, as turn site editor possible, right? Because site editor, everything is blocks. So we were being testing this new solution, right? Since the last six years. And the result of this is 43% of the internet is fully editable. This is amazing, right? Okay. Um, are you guys now familiar with 
site editor. It was a good explanation. Nice. Because I don't have any more slides about it. <laughs> so that's nice. Okay, I decided, um, I mean, everyone uh, will take benefit of using Site Editor, of course. That's my understanding of this new great feature. But I decided to split this and talk about three main ones, three main profiles, sorry, editors, designers, and developers, okay? Um, editors, I'm, I'm saying, for this presentation, editors, they are who write the content, do the marketing, SEO, landing pages, etc. Who are editors here? Do we have? Okay, nice. So uh, I have here a note to say, okay, I will say it. Basically, editors, uh, they are our heroes because if we have a good design of our website, if we have a good performance in terms of you know, developer perspective, if we don't have the right content, if we, do, if we don't understand the business model through our website, if our e-commerce is not um, SEO friendly, thank you, Mila, um, that means nothing, our website. So let's consider editors, the heroes here. Designers who design the UI, components, look and feel, styling, taking decisions about your website identity, et cetera, et cetera, and developers, who create bugs to solve later, like me. That's my life, by the way. Um, developed components overall. And um, I think this is kind of a personal opinion, but I think we are also responsible for the editor's experience. Okay, I think we have that mission. I mean, if we if we are if we have the tools, we have the skills, and if our editors are our heroes. So let's consider, let's, if we give a great experience to our editors, maybe we'll have a better product. So let's do that. I do have some thoughts about this, um, but yeah, let's, let's go. Let's follow the presentation, sorry. Um, mm, 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 what changes for editors? In my perspective, content is not just the content anymore. <laughs> This is a joke for developers, sorry. Uh, so the content is not the words in between the header and footer, right? Um, now we can see, uh, we can the editor can take decisions based on design standards, uh, create different headers, footers, etc. They can create patterns. This is amazing. I love it. Imagine a editor create his... Um, a newsletter form, for example, a newsletter um, uh, wrapper, um, he do doesn't need to do more than one time, okay? Just save it as a pattern and then we can reuse it across website. Okay, let's, let's focus on the landing pages, for example. If we are an ed editor who create landing pages in your daily basis, um, you you have a lot of style variations again defined by the designer or not, um, and you can create using the same the same source right using the same website you can have different style variations in your um, landing pages. This is amazing. The style variations can be defined by the editor, editor, designer, or developer. Team Chase and we'll talk about this soon. Okay, now let's go to um, my thoughts about what changes for designers. Okay, so I studied design like 1,000 years ago. Uh, I never design, I'm a developer, but I do have uh, some good expectations right now because now Site editor, I think, will change the way we developers look at a website, look the way we build a website, right? We'll talk about this soon. Um, and for example, if we create components, lists, uh, imagery, galleries, based on native components, because native blocks, because I think that is possible. Uh, let's imagine if the designers would be able to do that, like 
designing using the design system from the native blocks that is possible now. This is amazing. It is not necessary to have a developer. I think we could stop here. <laughs> this is amazing for designers, I know. Um, another good thing is we can change uh, the styling on the fly. Uh, I mean, we don't need to do any uh, deployments just to change a style or something, a header. So the designer can define the headers based on Figma with absolute values or not. Uh, here we can see these sizes, they are relative here, like small, medium, large, but the designer is also able to define the absolute ones. So the editor will, will see this because the, edit, the editor doesn't care if it's 14 pixel or 16, but the designer will, will be able to define these. Okay. And yeah, we can define headings, text, buttons, everything. Again, let's give a better experience to the editors, right? Uh, now I think it's time to start designing as well the user experience in the WP in BIM panel. I think that would be a game changer. Style variations. We saw this in on the last video. We can set style variations and I think the, um, the great advantage in here, it's like, we can see that the style variations, let's imagine you are, you are a designer uh, and you give to your editor a lot of backgrounds to use in your website. But for example, if your editor chooses the purple one, this is not like a design jungle, right? The editor will be, um, will also, if, if, the, if he chooses the, um, the purple one, sorry, the buttons, text, etc., the colors will be also defined by you before. So it's not a design jungle, right? And this is like a quick, okay, great. This is like a quick demo of a, an editor just switching between styles. So as you can see, yep, there isn't a specific obvious way to change only the background and doesn't care about uh, the, other, the other components. I love this one, a style book, because after you define everything, after you define the headings, spacing, paddings, etc., you have a style book and you don't need to create dummy content uh, to see all the results, right? Because we, you have now style book and then uh, you, are you seeing these tabs at the top? Text, media, design, widgets. You can just explore and see the results of your uh, of the style you set, the global styles you set. And this works per style variation. This is amazing for me. You can, this is like, you know, when you write the documentation on Figma, I think this is pretty similar. I like it. <clears throat> okay. Developers in the room. Oh my God. Okay, um, I do have some responsibility about this topic because I'm a developer too. Um, and again, I think this is about switching our perspective of what is a website, okay? Um, I do have like a couple of things um, to tell you. Okay, first of anything, goodbye header, footer, PHP, PHP files with HTML, We'll miss them, but let's say goodbye and say hello to uh, market, markup templates. Okay, uh, as you can see, this is HTML in an HTML template, but here, the gray, the gray text is a markup from 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 the blocks. So this is, we can define a header here, like um, to to be used by the editor. We can define more than more than one, of course, and then this is. The result of this, okay, it's too obvious, sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is a result of the, the things in the top. And yeah, uh, I think that is a great game changer uh, when we have the ability to forget these ones and start using this. Also, performance, 
because again because everything about site editor is about blocks uh we maybe we don't need huge css and js files anymore right because if you are building a header so you should look at the header like a block and now we have this and we can include the block styles and scripts uh, and they will be loaded only when necessary so performance site editor i mean blocks will do everything for you right team.json i love this because everything we uh, we saw on the demos etc can be defined here so css for blocks style variations css variables fonts team.json can have everything and you can instead of the designer goes there to the editor and define all the styles if you are a developer and if, if you have a figma doc a figma doc with documentation you can just convert into the team.json and the styling will be there amazing i love it I already tested and yeah does what they say <laughs> okay um yeah this is clearly should should switch the way we uh look at the website not like a final product uh but like um a group of components or uh, a product uh, you don't have the decision anymore to to the header to the footer is not uh, you are not creating headers forever uh, for good right and for me this is the main league game changer you you create a block if you see a girl if you hear if you see a home page i don't think we if we should keep building home pages maybe we should look at them creating a gallery block creating a form block etc etc and then the editor will be able to create the home page that's my understanding at least Embracing you, I think this is not polemic anymore. So WordPress is changing. Let's use it. It's it's amazing. Uh, my final, my last recommendation, fullsiteediting.com. Uh, this is a website by Caroline and Mark from Yoast. Everything about um, full site editor is is there. It's it's a it's a great website to to check. Obrigado. Thank you guys. Thanks, Samuel. And now we have some uh, minutes, five minutes for questions. One here and another there. So I have only five minutes for questions. Use it, please. Hello, Samuel. Thank you very much for this great talk. Um, I have a, a, a very um, pre provision, um, provision question, uh, which is how do you compare site element site editor uh with tools like elementor and in which situation you would you would prefer to use site editor and in which situations you would prefer to use elementor thank you very much mm -hmm. okay i think elementor is a great tool i think is not uh is not outdated just because we have a page builder now i think they are different solutions and maybe for the different um, users. I don't think it, it's the same. I, I didn't think too much about it, sorry. But I don't, <laughs> but I don't think it's the same, you know. Element, Elementor is amazing. I never use it, but I know it's amazing. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious. But <laughs> I already saw some websites built on Elementor. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they look amazing and they are also good for performance now it was an issue before I'm talking right right okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Mm. but yeah I don't think it's the same thing Elementor as I can see Elementor has a lot of components already there and they are already being adapted to site editor so uh, I think it's it's a different thing. We can we can do a simple website with native blocks. We can increase and we, we can improve the experience in the native blocks if you, if we developed from there, not from scratch, right? 
but I think if you if you had a uh, like a a website creator, we can just use Elementor, and I think the product is good. Sorry if this is polemic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Samuel, thank you very much. Um, I have a, a question about performance. What do you think um, contributes editing sites with the site editor uh, in terms of performance? Because there's a lot of code that's already written. It, it is rendered in a way that is probably the best for performance. Is there a big advantage using site editor in terms of performance? Yeah, I think because, um, because we are using blocks now and if we, if we need to have, for example, five headers headers prepared to to the editor to the editor use it. Sorry, um, you will have CSS for the five headers, JS for the five headers, loaded in the same huge file. And if they are blocks, different blocks or different templates, we can enqueue based on the on the, if the block is being used or not or not. We can enqueue them so it's more the, the assets is now, is now partial partial right so it's better yeah it's definitely better thank you so we have, we have, um, uh, some time for another uh, additional question so go for it there hello samuel Nice talk. Um, my question is, um, I don't know if you have an answer for this, but uh, lately I've been struggling with some um, concerns regarding having um, using Gutenberg as blocks uh, and providing the cl client's full capability to change the content. Um, and my question is, how do you think that we, as a developer, as developers, can find the, the fine balance between providing flexibility? while also avoiding that the client can change something that, that may bro bro break the site. For instance, we had a client, as you, as you said, we now don't have full ownership of over headers, footers, and so on. And we had a client that uh, by changing the footer, it, it broke. Uh, so how, how do you think that we can find this fine balance to make some kind of uh, constraints so the clients or, or content editors can change the content while don't uh, yeah, break yeah. the site. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I'm prepared for that one <laughs> because <laughs> because I I, I I I have a client and we have exactly the same the same issue. The the, the editors they don't have time not um, to decide the and the the, the position of things etc. So we up, we we are using inner blocks inner blocks. And there you can I Google it here? Sorry. Okay. Uh, because this is a good solution. Because you can uh, create uh, nested blocks. Sorry, nested blocks. Sorry, developer. Sorry, George. I know you're here. Okay, you have. You don't see to see, but okay. If you create um, nested blocks, you can define like a template in JS or in a JSON, and you can put um, the the structure of your group. For example, let's say a wrapper with a form with a, an image. They will be able to um, to 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 change the content to add the content. But you have a, a parameter, and we can block the template. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> you can block the template, so um, the editor will need um, will need uh, admin uh, uh, permissions to unlock the block and to move the, the the content in there. So they they will be able only to um, to write the content, not the the structure itself. It's a yeah nested blocks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we have a, a little bit more time for one quick question. Use it in one. Go ahead in two. Go ahead in three. And you didn't use it. So thank you, Samuel. Thank you.